2016 homeless count. Uh, the results provided data which proves that the overall number of homeless persons in LA County has increased compared to the previous year by 6% uh, to some 46,874 uh, persons. Uh, in the county, the number of unsheltered homeless persons living on the street in encampments, tents, and vehicles increased by 11%. In the city of Los Angeles, the largest of the 88 cities within the county, the increase among unsheltered homeless persons was even steeper, increasing by some 21%. As over the past year, the county and the city have taken unprecedented actions to address homelessness in a collaborative fashion, spearheading, spearheading separate but coordinated comprehensive homeless plans, setting aside significant sums of one-time funds to jumpstart the implementation of strategies and pursuing avenues of additional annual incomes. Um, we move forward to say on the 27th of uh, June, Los Angeles City Council unanimously approved placing a general obligation bond on the November 16th ballot to generate $1.2 billion to fund permanent supportive housing for chronically homeless and other forms of affordable housing. The passage of the city's bond uh, in November would allow the region to accelerate the pace of production and make significant uh, a significant dent in homelessness. So I therefore move that the Board of Supervisors endorse and express its strong support for Proposition 8, uh, the City of Los Angeles Homeless uh, Reduction and prevention housing and facilities general obligation bond proposition and urge the voters of the city of Los Angeles to vote yes on the proposition on November the 8th. We'll bring it up next, next week. week. And that, as a matter of um, information, Madam Chair, um, there was a unanimous vote this morning um, passed on the part of the city council um, expressing its support for our, our declaration of the state of emergency as it has been brought before the state legislature. So that's one more uh, city who's joined us in our effort to uh, underscore the issue at hand. Thank you. Great, great. Um, I just want to add that I um, know that we've, you've been working very vigorously on that issue and it's, and it's good that we keep the temperature there. And I'm very concerned as of late in the last weekend where we had a series of patients, individuals off Skid Row taken to our local county and our private nonprofit hospitals, which is creating, I think, uh, an enormous financial burden, something that we also need to address and tackle in terms of right. a somewhat SWAT team to be hands yeah. and feet on the ground as well as mobile units. I think traditionally that was done before, but I think there's an urgency and I'll be bringing something before the board on that next next time we meet. Uh, it's an A item. Anytime we want to address such an issue, perhaps we should just think mm -hmm. about having what public health right. and our DHS come before the board okay. next week and give us an update on what, what that was about and what it entails. For sep September meeting. Yeah, the next right. time we meet. Right. So yeah. that'd be a good That's idea. That's a good good thing to, right. to plan for you. Okay, very good. Now thank you, we Madam Chair. thank you. Without objection. So now we turn to public comment. We have uh, Yvonne Ebony, Ebony, Gator, Jose Martinez, Lucas Lucas, and Brad Helling Hellinger. Yes, have so a seat, sir. Ivan E. Gator, I would rather stand. Okay, I have uh, some infirmary swears. Uh, okay. You can hear me much better when I'm standing. Sure. And number one, first, when we speak of the monies, it should be that the people that are working in this so-called homeless industry need to do their jobs. At this time, I'm homeless. I was put out unfairly. Uh, this is with mental health. I suffer 
from uh, depression. Now, during this time, the last year and a half, I've been harassed, tortured, a uh, senior, okay, abused, and this uh, because when you're with mental health, workers, they can abuse you because all they say is he has mental health problems. They don't say what kind, and they can do whatever they want to to a person, and that person is not to be believed. Now, in my case, I put it as far as a person is to be believed until it is proved to be not true. And the best way to mess with a person's credibility is to do things that no one will believe. So things should be taken as true until it is uh, to be disproven. Me, I wound up being evicted. I had the money orders. And when I told the judge that I was a victim of discrimination, prejudice, work orders not being filled, people coming into my place stealing, which I have uh, police or reports, and also coming into my place when I'm not at home. Now, they have tried to get rid of me, uh, the management company, and also the nonprofit organization. One tells the other, oh, talk to the nonprofit organization. The nonprofit organization tells me to talk to uh, the management company. Now, I get no results, but Sir? I'm constantly being harassed. Sir, can uh, I ask I that maybe someone on staff meet with you? This is very important. Right. Uh, your time has expired, but we'll have someone from staff from mental health uh, to come and speak to you, if you, if you would uh, like, okay, to help address your concerns. That was more that I needed to uh, speak about as far as uh, the reason that there's so but many the, people out there homeless yes. is because people are not doing the their jobs. All they're doing is just getting signatures. Thank people you, sir. People are getting tired. Of sir, your time, time has expired and somebody and will they, speak to you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, next speaker. Yeah, Brad Hillinger. Um, many of you, honorable supervisors, many of you may know me, uh, many of you may not. Um, I founded a program called Reentry LA, and it's a criminal justice reform. I started off back with uh, and received a memorandum of understanding from the county uh, during the uh, Bach administration. Uh, I kept fighting and trying to implement what we're doing. Uh, it is a public-private venture. I currently have gained some traction back in Washington, D.C. On the 13th of September, we are going to be uh, briefing uh, the California delegation, members of the House Judiciary, members of the Senate Judiciary, and members of the uh, 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 Congressional Black Caucus with their staffers. I'm being sponsored by Congressman Alan Lowenthal, who believes in our program and is encouraged to possibly find appropriations to be attached to a bill currently moving to Congress. Yesterday, I met with Judge Peter Espinosa, who also agreed that what we have is something valid. And what we're doing now is he is seeking your support to discuss things with uh, Mitch Katz and uh, Mark Gailey so that we can invite uh, Judge Espinosa, Espinosa back to speak with us. And we also have been, uh, we want to extend an invitation to Jackie Lacey, Attorney, District Attorney Jackie Lacey to attend this with us. We feel that we have the opportunity now to create a recidivism reduction employment laboratory here in Los Angeles County. We are financed to put together all the upfront costs and all we've been looking for is for the per diem daily rates for the participants going through our program. And so I'm here to ask for permission for these people to, and for you to take this under consideration. We're getting the traction that we need. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Councilman, Councilwomen. You know, it's been about eight months since I've been out, been down here, but I've been keeping up with uh, the board meetings uh, on, uh, I think it's Thursday nights on uh, public television. You know, it's like four o'clock in the morning, but it is very good TV. The, the thing about it is, is I've been connected with the community out there with the nonprofits and uh, some of the homeless and some of the work and uh, orders that you've implemented into the county. And there's been a lot of uh, good being done. However, it's a little frustrating working with 
you know, some of the homeless and uh, some of the mental, mentally ill because it's, uh, it's just difficult. It's a very uh, rough field. To let you know a little bit about uh, what I've been going through, because I was involved with the AB 109, went through the DPSS, uh, went through some of the sober livings, and, you know, utilized uh, all of the benefits that uh, are given to somebody that, you know, has spent 25 years in prison. And uh, it's been a couple of years now that I've been out, and uh, things are going pretty good. I was driving for the uh, school district, uh, an affiliate company that uh, delivered all of the meals to the school kids uh, last year. Uh, got an employee of the month, you know, good job. It was a temporary gig. And then the company uh, went to hire me on this year. And, you know, unfortunately, 25 years of prison isn't really too much of a resume, you know, to, you know, put on there to be delivering meals to school kids. So I understand that completely. Uh, I'm still working on that. Uh, I am. It's just, you know, trying to clean up what I got to do. But I had to stop in. I'm over uh, at another courthouse doing some paperwork uh, but I can tell you this, uh, you know, with some of the uh, civil issues going on and uh, all of the uh, turmoil, you know, life is still good. I can tell you that. Uh, the fact is, is, uh, you know, we got to look to the brighter side of things. And uh, to come in here and listen to the work you do, I'm reminded of that on a daily basis. And uh, Mr. Antonovich, I truly miss your wonderful shirts. I'll try and get in a week from next week. Thank you. <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> Never mind. Okay, we have Jose Martinez, Michelle Walker, Jerry Manning, Oscar Mohammed. Hi, my name is Jerry Manning. I have good news. My case has been moved back to criminal court from mental health court, and I have been granted the opportunity to represent myself in this criminal proceeding. I am happy that the board is ending this meeting early so that I can go over to the law library and do legal research on criminal proceedings on picking a jury and jury instructions. I am at war. Well, I have not known that the county of Los Angeles has been at war with me secretly. And I sued the county on a couple of occasions. Now I am no longer seeking a legal redress from any jurisdiction in civil law. As I stated earlier, this is a civil, a human rights issue, not a civil rights issue. I was attacked with demonic spirits by this officer over here and the people who give the Board of Supervisors credence for and credit for this hearing are out of order. The credit belongs to the Lord God Jesus Christ who mandates these proceedings for a public hearing to have a, a Real democracy. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, hello, Michelle Hope Walker, your 2016 United States of America presidential candidate as well as public official. Um, the key thing I'm coming to talk to you today about, um, one is justice for Marion Hugh Suge Knight on what's going on in the Sheriff's Department. 
I really need you all to look at that case. There's a lot of um, stuff that's not right going on in that case. He doesn't get his medicine. They have shut him off from the outside world, which then prevents him from having a good defense and getting his defense team together. There's a lot of stuff being done that normally is not done in certain cases. Again, if you're not familiar with the case, um, he was trying to get away um, for his life. Uh, he did not have a weapon or anything of the sort, and people attacked him who did have a weapon, but he has been in jail for almost a year and a half. But the key thing um, in you all's uh, purview is how he's been treated in the um, jail. And you all have talked a lot about, I've heard a lot of people talk about different things that go on in that jail, and it's still true. There was times he did, wasn't getting showers, pillows, medicine, they don't take him to the doctors, and somehow there's an investigator that has a lot of power over what is going on, even in the courts. So please, again, I'll say his name slow so you can look it up, Marion Hugh Suge Knight. So if you could please check on his case, there's a lot of things not being done uh, correctly. Um, they're shutting him out from the outside world, but they give no reason for why. Um, again, there may be different accusations from different people, but there's no proof. And in this incident right here, what they say they have him in jail for is um, for people attacking him and him just trying to get away. And that, right, actually, he shouldn't even be in jail for that, because if either one of you all were trying to get away from someone trying to kill you, I don't think you'd be arrested. And race has a big issue in it, too. So please look at that case. And thank you, Mark, for all the things you do for um, standing up for the homeless and all of you. And thank you for the jail. Uh, jail. We're not in jail, are we? <laughs> but the, the sheriff guys here, I think they're very nice and the ones out there. I, usually I have no problem with them. I appreciate that. Thanks. Next speaker. Yes, I know last week I was speaking about uh, maybe the United States Congress should be looking into the holy book of the Muslim that we call the Quran. But anyway, in, I didn't get the history, but in 1977, Imam Wazdi Muhammad, the leader of over two million African-American Muslims in North America, he started the interfaith with Muslim, Jews, and Christian. And three or four times a year, the interfaith committee to go to the United States White House and they talk to the president. And Wazdi Muhammad only speaks Islam. But anyway, uh, but anyway, I'd like to speak about we above the um, well, we should we should rise above the unprincipled, be concerned about the things that should be respected. Then we should address the listeners, listeners from that position. If people are down, we should not talk down to them, although they are, we are up and they are down. That is what, I, what we believe in. We should be looking to, be, to, look, to put our, ourselves higher and higher on the scale of excellent-minded and conduct ex excellent character and behavior with a significant and rich thought and aspiration, promote intelligent, uh, promote the intelligence of, he, of the human. But anyway, we should end that nonsense and moral stuff with what they call skid row. This political system has put the black folks in hell. Black folks and Satan have took the big cities to a living hell in, in the metropolitan city. But even though Los Angeles is the most diverse city in America and the most in, uh, uh, impoverished city in, um, and one of the most impoverished cities in America. We should have checks over law enforcement. We need uh, an independent review board to be checked the law enforcement of the daily activity. We, sh and we should see how that dangerous Wall Street should stop, be, should end also. I was looking on TV the other day that Wall Street goes international using they, uh, authority and their decision in other nation economy. Who give them the hell to do that? Thank you. Arnold Sachs and Eric Previn. Greetings, it's Eric Previn from the third district. Um, just going backwards, I looked at the amendment on item six, and I can't see any amendment. It looks like, I mean, it is a document that says the amendment, but I don't see any change to the ordinance about uh, Roland Heights living suites, so that's just of note. Now, um, the Board of Supervisors have such an important job. This is a 11 million resident, plus or minus, uh, operation, and the overwhelming uh, mandate for the Board is to kind of look out for those who need help. And, you know, I, we try in the public comment, people from the public, to participate in the meeting, and you've uh, revised the meeting for next uh, September 6th. There are going to be some rules that we'll discuss, I guess. But 
When the public brings stuff forward and the Board of Supervisors go out of their way to kind of avoid hearing it or be out at a meeting during the context in which, for example, on today, item 19, a transfer of a 20-year golf course. And Supervisor Ridley Thomas obviously had an important thing to do. He left the meeting, but he didn't get a chance to hear my update, which was that Neil Miller and Stuart Hayden are linked to the previous big monolith American golf, and that that's information he may want to have when he approved, as a seconding motion, the vote to do so. Now, you know, that's one small example uh, where uh, the public comment is being evaded or sideswept. There's also a great tradition in this body of abstaining when things get dodgy. That's not okay because we need the supervisors who have built their careers, like the many uh, leaders and civil rights and labor leaders who we're gonna be hearing invoked very, very soon as we head toward Labor Day. We need them to stand up and be there when the public needs them, when the public can't defend themselves against billionaires who come into town and tell lies right in front of the, the government officials and then get away with it. So that's why I'm asking you as you go off and take a couple days and see if you can find Kuehl, who's had an outstanding time off, and I assume she's okay. I've already asked, so everyone said she's fine. And, and do the right thing when you come back on September 6th and debar the group that has made those misrepresentations to the public of LA County. Next speaker, thank you. Yes, thank you, good afternoon, Arnold Sachs. Um, and you're having on your next agenda <laughs> an emergency housing ordinance or for homeless initiative, more of the homeless initiative. You know, there's a heightened fire awareness uh, right now. Disaster has been declared in several counties for some of the fires. So you wouldn't necessarily want to go out and have an open barbecue type thing. Um, so I'm looking at this. I don't know if any of you read the newspaper story. Um, vacancies in the Athletes Village. It was August 19th. It mentions that the Olympic Village is, had a population of 17,000. Athletes are housed in 31 identical 17-story buildings on 252 acres in Rio. Because in 129.16, proposal would house hundreds of veterans. Oh, and by the way, no Olympics. If you have a housing emergency shortage, a homeless emergency, it's kind of tough to have Olympics. That's my general idea about having a barbecue during all the fire hazard that's going on now. But back to this story, proposal would house hundreds of veterans, not even 2,000, 1,200 permanent supported housing units and 700 short-term units for homeless veterans. That's 1,900 on 388 acres at the VA. So 14,000 less people on 120 more acres of property. That's the county math working at its best. That's what you really want to hear. That's good news. Today's newspaper has an editorial from Ron Nichols about a tainted deal on San Onofrio. On Wednesday, August 17th, there was an editorial, a tainted deal on San Onofrio. It mentions that Michael, Michael Peavy, PUC president, he's the CEO of Southern California Edison. What would you expect him to do as far as dealing with the nuclear plant? It's incredible. Ma Madam Chair, item what? CS1 okay. will be continued to September 6th. Please be advised that the August 30th, 2016 regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors is canceled. The next regular meeting of the Board of Supervisors is scheduled for Tuesday, September 6th. 2016 at 1 o'clock p.m. I would add, I wish everyone a happy Labor Day since we uh, won't be here. We'll be here the day after and uh, thank everyone on staff and hope that you have a peaceful, restful time. Thank you. Madam yes, Chair, Supervisor uh, on time. two points to, to uh, announce. Saturday at 6 in the morning, walk will begin at 6.30 a.m. from the San Gabriel Mission to the Alvera Street in recognition of the founding of the County of Los Angeles at the San Gabriel Mission and the 235th anniversary of the founding of the City of Los Angeles when they walked from the Mission the nine and a half miles to downtown. Uh, I've walked it a number of years. I encourage all of us here and those listening. It's a very interesting walk. And the, the mayor and the City Council from San Gabriel will always participate, and at times uh, so there'll be a, somebody from the city of Los Angeles, but it's very good. And Thank then you. the the Vatican uh, antiquities at the Vatican that are at the Ronald Reagan Museum or the Ronald Reagan Library, that 
exhibition has been extended through uh, September 11th, so it is still there. Uh, they extended it for a couple more weeks, and I encourage those uh, who haven't seen it, it's, it's worth seeing. It's many of the antiquities from uh, the Vatican. They even have the relics of St. Uh, Paul and St. Peter uh, there. But a lot of Michelangelo and other artists' uh, works are in, on display. Thank you. Thank you. With that, then we are officially adjourned. Thank you.